Good day traders, this is Stefanos on behalf of Tixi and in today's webinar we'll be giving an outlook of the market for the week of the 11th until the 15th of July. Now looking at some of the highlights for next week, we have Spotify and Walt Disney in the spotlight after they had their price targets revised by Citigroup. On the Forex front, Bank of Canada and the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, we're going to have their interest rate announcements next week. As always, please note that all of the ideas discussed in this webinar are my own opinions and do not make up for any form of investment and trading advice, neither any recommendations to buy or sell. You should always do your own research and due diligence before buying or selling any securities, financial products or instruments and whether you use any kind of trading strategies. Any information that relates to past performance is not indicative of future results. So, uh, looking at stocks, like we said, the two in focus were Spotify and Walt Disney. Now we're going to pull up the chart of Spotify first, and obviously we're just going to transfer over to Walt Disney. I'll keep this for the time being on the daily time frame. Uh, but as we mentioned during the intro, uh, both of these stocks they had their price targets revised by Citigroup. Now, Spotify specifically uh, had the price target being decreased from 165 down to 150. Uh, while well, Walt Disney had the price target reduced from 165 to 145 instead. Now, looking at both of them and Spotify, uh, first of all, like we can see that it's still pretty far away from the intended price target. Now, even though the price target was decreased, it still has more or less like 50, uh, 50 dollars to basically of breathing room just to move, uh, further, further up. Like we said, the target now it's down to 150, but it's still all the way up here. Um, so even though both of them, so if I switch to Walt Disney's chart as well, you're gonna see pretty much it's the same story more or less. So switching here, uh, like we said, for Walt Disney, the price target was reduced from 165 to 145 instead. Uh, Spotify was 150, but again, it still has all this room, breathing space, basically to move higher and higher. Um, so looking looking at the revisions, like on one hand, while we didn't have the price targets being decreased, uh, it still means that they could have quite a strong upside potential because it still remains quite high, uh, relatively speaking, to the current market price. Um, so whether I mean, obviously, we don't know when um, when Citigroup expects the prices to start moving higher and up towards those targets. We don't even know uh, if it's for sure that it's going to reach them. Uh, but one one thing certain, I mean, obviously this news is definitely gonna raise some eyebrows. Uh, and looking at next week, it's it's probably going to increase volatility. Looking at AMD, uh, sorry, at Spotify and Walt Disney specifically. Uh, I mean, just the stocks themselves are they're already pretty liquid. I wouldn't say they're the most volatile, but it's not a bad thing. But they are quite liquid. That obviously it can it means that it can present with some decent uh, trading opportunities, whether it's to the long side or the short side. Now. What it's important to take out, I mean, like we said, we do have the price target, which still has so much bring space, but again, we don't know for certain if that's what price are going to do, which is going like to move higher. Uh, but whatever the case may be, if it brings some added, added volatility, obviously it can present with some further trading opportunities uh, on both ends. So yeah, definitely keep an eye on this one. If it's a stock uh, that's on your watch, watch list and you'd like to trade it, uh, then obviously it's going to be an interesting one for the next week at least and the foreseeable future just to see like how it's going to fare compared to the uh, intended price target from Citigroup. Uh, next up we're going to move on to Forex and we're going to have a look at the economic calendar. Um, so we mentioned during the intro that we have two interest rate decisions, one from uh, Bank of Canada and the other one from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Uh, to find the economic calendar, as always, you just navigate to the homepage by clicking on the uh, logo up here. Then you go to Education Research tab and then Economic Calendar. Um, and then obviously you can start manipulating the data by just uh, clicking through the different filters here. But for the sake of the video, we're going to switch this to next week uh, and medium and high impact events as always. And always keep an eye on the time zone because obviously you want to make sure you're looking at the correct times uh, what for the release of each event. Um, so looking at things on Monday, it looks like it's going to be quite a pretty quiet day on Monday. Uh, so things are going to start picking up from Tuesday onwards. Uh, so looking at 
2.30 in the morning Australia time, sorry, UK time, uh, we're going to have the business confidence figure from Australia, which is the first high impact event of the week we're getting. Uh, you can also use, as always, the tooltip right here, which gives you a pretty good gauge of the volatility you can expect uh, in the hours following the release of the event. So after the business confidence from Australia, we're going to have the economic sentiment uh, index from the Eurozone at 10 in the morning which is then going to be followed by the economic sentiment index from Germany specifically. Uh, so we see it's going to be pretty much we're going to be kicking things off with a bunch of business slash economic sentiment uh, figures, uh, starting, like we said, with Australia, then followed by the uh, Eurozone. Uh, we do have one for business, business confidence for Brazil as well. So if you're into exotic uh, pairs and obviously the Brazilian real, it's something that you could like, look into if you're looking to trade this kind of event. Uh, and then we're swiftly moving on to Wednesday. So we can see yet again consumer confidence figures. Uh, this time it's going to be again from Australia, but it's going to be a different provider, which is going to be Westpac uh, in this case. It's going to be released at 1.30 uh, in the morning. And then, like we said, one of the events we mentioned during the intro is going to be the interest rate decision from New Zealand at 3 in the morning UK time. Now, we're going to have also some other important events like the trade balance uh, from China, which is uh, the other one as well, is going to be one hour after the interest rate decision. Uh, and then heading into the London session slash EU session, we're going to have the GDP data uh, from the UK, which is pretty much going to be released at the same time as the inflation figures uh, from Germany as well. And uh, looking, scrolling further down, I will have the trade balance figure. I mean, it's a medium impact event, but again, uh, trade balance figures or like the actual events can bring in some volatility as you can see here it's 50 pips movement in the four hours following the event so it's it's a pretty decent range when we look at the pound dollar uh, for example it's a pretty decent range to work with uh, so yeah that's gonna be towards midday at 12 uh, UK time uh, and then past midday we're gonna have the inflation data uh, from the US which is pretty much gonna be closely followed by the interest rate decision uh, from Canada they are expected to raise their interest rates, so definitely going to be uh, a pretty good event to keep an eye on. Uh, as it's going to be, uh, as we can see, just by the volatility itself, this one is close to 100 pips in the four hours following the event. So we can definitely see the kind of magnitude the, uh, the event can bring into the market. Uh, and then moving on to Thursday, we're going to start things off with employment data from Australia. Uh, and then it's pretty much gonna we're gonna have the PPI figures from uh, the US at midday, which is the other high impact event of the day. Uh, and then finishing things off on Friday, we're gonna have GDP data from China at three in the morning. Uh, and then again, back to looking at trade balance figures. This time it's gonna be from the EU. And then towards the uh, the two the final two uh, high impact events of the week, which is going to be the retail sales figure from the U.S. and then it's going to be the, another consumer sentiment uh, figure. This time it's going to be from the U.S. Uh, and it's going to be pretty much at three. It's going to be the last uh, event, high impact event, let's say of of the week. Uh, and yeah, so this is with regards to the economic calendar and which uh, events to keep an eye on. Like we say, we have two interest rate uh, decisions, which obviously. Uh, gonna be good in terms of forex traders who are looking into some uh volatile events to take advantage of if they want to do so uh so yeah definitely keep an eye on those uh, and since we're on the topic of the economic calendar as always we have the oil inventory reports uh being released uh, on wednesday at 3 30 uh uk time uh if we look at the chart a little bit of oil it's been a while so let's just pull it up just to have a look um, we're going to see that, let me just switch this onto the weekly. So prices have been stuck in this range basically since the beginning of March. So the range, I mean, the bottom end of the range is the 93s and the top of the range is like the 126. So it's like a $30 range more or less has been trading uh, since the beginning of March. Um, so, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see the narrative next week with it because we're already kind of bouncing off the lows of the bottom of the range. So it's kind of trading up towards the middle of the range. Uh, so yeah, depending also on the inv inventory report, which can definitely impact prices quite strongly. It'll be interesting to see if we're going to get one more tap of the top range and for how much longer we're basically just going to be trading uh, within this range. Uh, but in any case, it is a $30, $30 range. So 
uh, intraday opportunities can be found or if you're looking to trade from top to bottom for example uh, that could be another alternative uh, so yeah we can see like even with despite uh, the range itself we, we can still take advantage of some opportunities whether we're trading within the range or just trading trading the breakouts um, when they do take place uh, and lastly we're gonna be looking at cryptocurrencies uh, and we're gonna look at Bitcoin specifically so let me just pull up the chart here so Bitcoin US dollar and we're gonna keep this it's on the daily but just switch this on the weekly just to get a better uh, view I hide the moving averages for now I'll bring them back later uh, but basically for those who have been watching uh, the lookbacks and outlooks quite regularly uh, you will know that we've been pretty much looking at this area for quite some time now now we pretty much started discussing about a potential drop down into these levels when we were still consolidating around this area which is between the mid 29s up to the uh, 32,000 uh, we did break down and then following that we just pretty much were, uh, were basically mentioning this level here as the next potential structure level where price could uh, bounce off or start ranging and we're pretty much seeing like some similar price action as to what happened a couple of weeks back in the sense that right before the breakout we're just pretty much consolidating for like three four weeks uh, before we had the breakdown and that's we're getting what we're getting right now as well now of course what's important with uh, ranging markets to be patient because obviously you don't want to be getting chopped up each time the price uh, tries to break out and maybe it's a fake out and just moves in the opposite direction so it's important to be patient but obviously the fact that there's a consolidation uh, is pretty good in itself as well because it means that it's the precedent to a breakout as well so I uh, will see whether price will try to reach as a level up here uh, if not then we could see it be breaking down first of all down to the 14 thousands um, and then pretty much so we have what it's gonna be run up run about the 10,000 uh, 6,000 but yeah anyway I mean first level is gonna be uh, around the 14,000 so definitely quite some room now to work with as well uh, but for the time being everything is kind of pointing towards the downside so if I put back uh, the two exponential moving averages one of them is the five period uh, which is the light blue one and the orange is a 13 period uh, so you can see that both of them are pretty much pointing towards the downside price is trading below uh, both as well uh, i have plugged in the rsi here as well and we can see that it's trading towards the bottom end of the range so it's about 30 uh, 30.3 uh, so yeah for the time being there are no real signs of a reversal this doesn't mean that we could we can retest like the level here because this is not really a reversal it's just like more of like a correction um but yeah like this could be an indication as to what we can expect in the next couple of weeks uh but in any case like we said there's still quite um uh, quite a significant area to work with um so yeah if cryptocurrency is the niche now that you're trading uh pretty much i would say there's still a lot of volatility obviously in the market as we've seen from the past couple of weeks and not just in bitcoin but in other cryptocurrencies as well uh, so yeah definitely keep an eye out either uh of for the chart or any headlines uh and yeah let's see what the markets are going to be uh doing in the in the next in the following weeks uh, and there you have it as far as the outlook for next week's markets i hope you enjoyed the video and you found it useful and i'll catch you all in the next one until then trade safe